All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Rick Plaskett with me. Rick is a West Point graduate and former Army officer who's turned his sword into a business plowshare. He blends the experiences of military leadership and planning with world-class business practices to produce huge results. So let's jump right into it and hear from Rick. Rick, thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here with you. Fantastic. And let's get started with the questions. Why did you become a coach? Why did I become a coach? About 14 years ago, um, I was working in corporate America, Home Depot to be exact. And after months and months of being called at strange hours of the morning and getting texts on uh, the old Crackberry, Blackberry phone for getting ready to give another uh, mind-numbing presentation to a board of directors that just wasn't willing to uh, look at current events and figure out how to make things happen. Uh, I left corporate America and I became a, a business owner myself and in the process learned that uh, you know many of the things that I had done in the military, some of the planning uh, processes and the way to look at current events and look for opportunities was just exactly what uh, business owners, small business owners, mom and pops, um, even up to some of the old corporate executives were absolutely craving and needing to work with. And, you know, the biggest, the, the biggest thrill for me was a very short time after becoming a business coach. I had one of my clients, 10 year old sons call me up at nine o'clock at night, telling me that uh, dad had hit his goal and therefore he was taking them to Disney World calls that, that juice me. And that's what I look for in the evenings instead of the calls for yet another PowerPoint presentation to somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling right now because I can relate to that having worked at McAfee and Intel myself yeah, about 15, 20 years ago. Question number two, what are you doing now in your coaching business that's unique? You know, there's two things with the, the pandemic and, and the pandemic pressures and stress, the fatigue that everybody is feeling. Throughout the entire last year, the feedback I get from my clients is, you know, Rick felt like we were always two weeks ahead, two steps ahead of what was coming up next. And it was just a way of looking at what was going on and working with my clients to help them you know, stay ahead. The, I, I think one of the things that makes me unique is there's a whole lot of consultants out there and there's even some coaches that in, in the mentality of many people that are looking for coaches or consultants is help me with my weaknesses. I coach to your strengths. I look at every one of my clients as their Superman. You know, Superman gets from point A to point B by flying. He doesn't run. So let's get you in those things that are your strengths and mm -hmm. let's figure out how to apply those strengths to what you need right now. You know, Superman, when he hits the kryptonite, he doesn't, he can't even walk away from it. You know, he finds somebody else to move that kryptonite or get him away from it. He finds another solution. So that I think that's what makes me unique is I look for people's superpowers and their, their strengths, and we coach to those and apply those to what they want out of life. I love that. Uh, I love the Superman metaphor. And I think that, I think that tracks, it's very, it's classic Peter Drucker, right? Focus on your strengths and, and you know, don't, don't worry so much about your weaknesses. That's great, good stuff. Next question, uh, how do you find your clients? You know, it's interesting. After doing this for 14 years, there seems to be a, a life cycle. You know, every new coach that gets out there, they are used to network, 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 and, you know, buy them any way they can. After 14 years, you know, then it transitions into more of a referral base. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say that the, the vast majority of my clients are coming from trusted friends, uh, someone in my network that knows someone else. Those trusted friends could be a CPA, they could be a financial planner, or you know, just somebody else in their network. Clearly, you know, a, a strong network that I have is that network of, of veterans, veteran business owners. My West Point Alumni Association is is constantly connecting, and I do the same thing with them. Love that. Good stuff. Question. Number four, what is the biggest challenge that you have had to face as a coach? 
You know, I think the biggest challenge I have as a coach really isn't much different than uh, than a lot of other businesses, and that is continuing to look to the future and continuing to keep your your pipeline filled. If I were to make that unique to me, is you know, my biggest challenge is I've had so many clients that have had successes, and yet there's so other so many more out there that I'm just not connected with. <laughs> and it just, particularly now, you can read the newspaper, you can, if anybody reads the newspaper, you know what I mean on your phone reading the newspaper. You know, the news is just filled with so many businesses that are just hanging up the towel right now. You know, this is their swan song, it's too much, it's too hard, and yet there's so many golden opportunities for, you know, in chaos, there is always an opportunity, in change, there's always an opportunity. As we look to the, the rest of 2021, uh, my goodness, you know, we, we know more now than we did a year ago, and yet there's so much unpredictable change and rate of change out there and what's going to change and what's not going to change. You know, that's a golden opportunity to just, again, work with someone that's a business owner and look for their strengths, look for what they have and where they want to go and, and put those together into a game plan. But it's not a plan anymore. It's, a, it's being prepared for that next phase. Planning was a year ago. We don't plan anymore. You know, we, we need to be prepared for that next opportunity and strike and strike fast when we got it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think every time a business closes its shutters, it creates a void in the space, in the market space. And that's a room for someone else to to come up and take some of that market share. It's good stuff. Question number five. If you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would it be? You know, as a coach, you take, you can look at all those the best sports coaches out there and mm -hmm. they're constantly learning. They are absolutely constantly learning. You know, the best do-over if I had, wow, It'd probably be to, to, to learn, learn quicker, faster, and better to pivot when it comes to, uh, when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, pay attention to some market, some signals that you've got, maybe some data that you've got, pay closer attention to those and make the pivot faster. You know, the, <laughs> besides the cruise lines, public speaking personalities were probably the, the second most adversely hit by this pandemic you know when you close down the ability to have interpersonal connections mm -hmm. that's an entire market that that disappeared and to put a uh, a lot of marketing into uh, personal and old school is uh is to avoid or or to not see the future of the leveraged and the online and um so you know i'll, I'll be honest I've been playing a little bit of catch up there, you know, learn very, very quickly. But, you know, that is something that I was not, not really paying close attention to when I could get out in the evening and share a beer or get connected with somebody and have a coffee with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good, that's an important lesson in, in this day and age for sure. Great. Uh, so bonus question, Rick, what is one book that you would recommend all of your clients read? You know, I'm going to give you two, and these are two obscure ones. There's a whole lot that, that that you should read or could read that would help. And let me start with with one that I read at West Point and never understood the full potential of it and what it was until now. And that's probably the one book that I go back to and read regularly. And that is Sun Tzu and the Art of War. And, you know, wow. and in, in today's world, you don't need to read anymore. YouTube is the new Cliff Notes. Sun Tzu had so many philosophies right on engaging in the opportunities. The other one is just a, a fun one that I like because of the style. You, you know, in the Olympics, you've got, let's call Olympic skaters and, uh, and even Olympic gymnasts. You know, you get a certain set of points for doing the activity. And then you get a certain set of points for the style and the finesse. And mm -hmm. so the finesse of, of approaching life and approaching relationships and just being able to celebrate was a book that was written. I don't even know if it's still in published. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. You can get just about anything on it. But it was everything I needed to know in life I learned from watching Star Trek. That's fantastic. 
just a little example of why I like that book is, you know, if, if you know anything about it, um, you know, they, they have two parts. One is every time Captain Kirk leaves the bridge, he makes a very clear point of appointing who's in charge. You know, that does two things. That tells your entire organization who that person is that yeah. is in charge now. It also makes sure that that one person knows that they've got the helm. They're in command. You know, the other thing that they mentioned was when dignitaries came on to the, the enterprise, they, they always, always, always celebrated that. Mm -hmm. They dress formally to celebrate. And mm -hmm. one of the things they do in that celebration is have a meal together. And in that meal, they always toast. Mm -hmm. You know, we get together for beers on a regular basis. We invite friends over. But when's the last time that you sat there and recognized everybody and toasted them? and mm -hmm. told you the relationship that you have with that person. You know, those are just two little examples from that book that just really pull, make you stop and think, you know, are mm -hmm. we taking too much for granted? Are we texting too fast to, you know, used to say, <laughs> the, the old saying used to be, kick your butt and, and take names. And, you know, I had a sergeant once told me, you're moving too fast to take the full names, just take the initials. That's fantastic. That's great, Rick. I, that, that was supposed to be the last question, but I have to ask now, are you a Trekkie? You know, I'm a closet Trekkie. Absolutely. Okay. I've got, I've got three pictures on my wall of what I consider, you know, great leaders and leadership teams. And one is the original cast from Star Trek. The other one will surprise you. It's the cast from MASH. That's another and great show. Love take it. a group of misfits and have them perform to world-class standards, you know, that's what leadership, that's what being a team, that's what having a culture is all about. It doesn't have to be, you know, full-fledged formal, but when it gets together, you know it's magic. And Which, that's, that's what I like to coach to is getting that magic into a business. That's great. That's great, Rick. Where can our listeners find you online? Uh, you know, real simple is uh, you can look me up on LinkedIn and get connected to me there. The last name is Plaskett, just like basket, but it starts with a P and an L instead. The other one is a uh, website. You can Google me, Rick Plaskett Action Coach. My website will pop up. I've got several YouTubes out there as well. You know, there's the old phone as well. I don't know why we still call these mobile devices in our pockets a phone. How many times do you really? I don't know either. It? It's all a <laughs> mobile device. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a tether to the rest of the world somehow. <laughs> well, that's great, Rick. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches. And thank you, our audience, for tuning in. We will see you next time. Cheers. Right, thank you, Michael. Thank you.